All right, today I'm going to review the KK-13 Dragonfly. Now this definitely looks like an Anafi. You can see how the wings fold out, just like the paired Anafi. But it is a little wider here and a little smaller. Uh, so what it does have is a, it's supposed to have a 4K camera. Uh, we'll see how that looks. Uh, it has some sensors at the bottom, uh, port for your memory card, and one thing that is concerning is these are your antennas. So this thing is not going to go very far if they're using uh, cheap antennas. But one good thing about it is it does charge via USB-C, but just like the Anafi, this takes a long time to charge, maybe like three hours, and it's only a 3000 milliamp. 6.7 volt battery, but it takes a long time to charge this thing And that's it. So the battery just slides in and You have a gimbal to access in the front and we'll check out the video quality when we get it in the air Here's a transmitter for it and the transmitter folds out The one good thing about it. It does have an LCD display on it and I'll show you that in a minute Here's your antennas, but just like a lot of other cheap quads, there are no antennas inside of here. The antenna is just a little piece of wire like I showed you at the bottom of the drone. It's just sticking in there like that. Here's the antenna right here. That's the one that the transmitter uses. There's no wire. It stops right here. There's no wire going to either one of the antenna slots that are here there and there and that's where the antenna goes when I close it up so these are dummy antennas I'm not sure how much flying I'm going to do today because it is very windy you can see uh, the leaves blowing but we will give it a try so here are the knobs and these it came with two extra knobs and they unscrew there's a screw in there and you can take the knobs off and put the other ones in uh, I'm not sure why you needed extras but it came with two extra so now I'll show you what's in the box Okay, one thing I wanted to show you, the gimbal cover, so it just goes in like this. There are little slots in there. Make sure your gimbal's pointing forward and push it forward. And then when it's closed up, these here, I was wondering what these are for, kind of protect the camera so nothing touches it. So that's a pretty nice little feature. Alright, so in the case, we have, it looks like it was built originally for and Anafi because it is way too long for the drone itself but it does fit in there the batteries if you had extra batteries will fit into here and your controller goes right there so here's a strap for the case it came with a couple USB this regular USB to charge the controller a USB-C to charge the battery of your drone screwdriver and the for taking these on and off extra set of props it's just one of each no two of each and then some screws and that's it and uh, manuals so I just want to get in the air and see how this thing flies and check out the video quality all right so I'll unfold the drone take this cover off power on Let's see how it powers on. You just hold it to power on. I'll turn on the controller. So it's you gotta push it in hard. Turns it on. So here you can see all your information you want. It has height, distance, GPS on or off, how many GPS satellites you have, and what mode you're in. Okay, and swift GPS is what we're looking for. Connected. Swift GPS is that. And we'll hit start. So I'll go ahead and mount phone in there. Okay. And we'll go to video. I hit video right now, so we'll see what that records. Now I'll hit stop on the video. And I saw that green screen on somebody else that uh, posted a video of this. 
and I'll turn my sticks out by the vibration. Here it is hovering. It's supposed to have optical flow, so we'll see how it hovers. It's not very loud. It's a good thing. Let's check the lights out. Looks like it has a light at the bottom that's blinking. Not sure what that is and why it's blinking. Let's see if anything's going. I'm not recording anything right now. So I will hit record up here. If I hold it, So it looks like my camera button's not working. Let's just try to stay hit and record there. And I'll just try to take it up right now, do a distance test. Not, not distance test, I'll just take it up and uh, see if hit and record. On the screen. It says it's still recording. I'll tilt my gimbal down. That's speed. So this tilts my gimbal up. And we'll tilt it down towards the ground. Maybe it'll change the exposure. Okay, so that's the video quality. It's definitely a fisheye camera. And we'll just try to fly it out a little and see when I lose signal. Let's go out a little more again. Okay. Maybe there's some kind of a geo fence set. Let's check. Let's go into the settings. Yep, flight distance. We'll change that. Flight height, change my altitude when returning home. So now it'll let me go out as far as I want it to. We'll see. So right now I am, let's see where it's at if it's drifting. Make sure that I have, it's light and it's windy, so I'll make sure that I can get home. So it is returning back when I pull backwards. And I'll hit the speed again. That's two. That's one. Or so it's one and two. So if I turn this up, it's one. Turn that way is two. Let's see if there's any difference. That's one speed. Seven, almost eight meters per second. Bring it back. And that's in LH down at the bottom here. Turn the wheel, it goes to RH. We'll hit it again. 10 meters, 11, 10. Let's try that one more time. I'll go. Big bird down there. I'll hit that one more time the other way and go full speed. So it's definitely slower in that speed. And I click to the other one and it pitches harder and goes faster. Okay. So that's my speed. I'll bring it back. Nice big bird there. See if I can get that bird. See how much battery. Looks like I'm about halfway on my battery. Again, I'll tilt it up towards the sky. Up at speed. I keep I always think gimbals on this side. I'll tilt it up. Try to 
try to get some of the skyline. Let's see how it auto adjusts. There's no nothing you can change in the camera here. All it is is just hit record. There's no changing the settings. But if I show the sky and the skies, it just makes the ground darker and unusable. So if I wanted to tilt it up to where I had an almost level horizon, I wouldn't be able to see the ground at all. So I tilt it back down so we can see where we're going. Let's take it up. See if I can get it 120 meters with this little antenna. Reach its height limit. Bring it down a little. It's coming down and I'll go ahead and see if I can change that. Flight height. Change it to 120, save. Let's go back up. So this is definitely not a quad that you're going to use for distance. It doesn't have the technology for it. It has toy grade antennas on it and I'm sure they're not going to go very far. I'm at 120 meters and my Wi-Fi for the FPV is through my phone so I'm limited to how far my phone transmits the signal. Let's push it out some towards the water. And let's make sure I can bring it back. Don't want to lose it first day. It is fighting that wind. Let's try to bring it down. So I'm going to get that thing closer to home because I'm going against the wind and it doesn't like it. It's a good thing I didn't go out too far. I wouldn't have made it back. So right now I'm looking at 3 meters per second. And I'm dropping altitude just to try to make it back home. Now I'm full sticks forward. Let's try to drop it down some more. Still full sticks forward. Okay, I finally got a little bit. The wind must calm down a little. And let's go ahead and bring this thing in before I lose it. I can see it above me drifting backwards even though let's go ahead and get it down some more and try to get it above the yard so at least I won't lose it it's having no luck with this wind I just gotta get it past these trees Need the wind to calm down for one second. There we go. Now it's coming in. Let's go ahead and bring it back overhead. Now just do a hover. Maybe I'm in the wrong speed. Let's click it. Again, let's see if this was the fast one. That seems to be the slow speed. Yep, so I was in the fastest speed and it didn't like fighting the wind at all. So this is definitely not nothing you want to get out there when it's windy. So this is a video quality you can expect from it. Again, it does have the fish eye. It's not very stable. It uh, doesn't look like there's any um, electronic stabilization at all. And there's no camera settings. The only thing I can do is, if I have a exposure issue, is just tilt it down towards the ground to 
so I can see the video. Button. This button normally works. One button to take photos, one to take video. I took it apart uh, to see if it had an antenna in it, and it, it didn't. So maybe when I put it back together, I didn't put something in the button back. All right, so I'm looking at my receiver. It shows RX one bar. So that is for the drone. My transmitter still has three bars. And again, this display is nice to have. There we go. So it's going to go up probably to the flight height that I had set that was 120 meters. I hope not. No, nope, it went back right above the house. We'll see where it's going. Okay, at least it let me adjust it. Okay, one to come up right above the house, but I was able to push forward and uh, it canceled that. So let's go ahead and tilt the gimbal all the way down. It's all the way up. We'll see all the way down what that looks like while it's coming down. So the gimbal does tilt all the way down. And I'll just go ahead and let it land. Alright, that's it. That's my initial flight of the KK-13. And here are my initial thoughts. I don't care that it has a cheap transmitter. Uh, if it would have had proper antennas on there, maybe a good transmitter, then I wouldn't care if it's cheap plastic. The Hubson, the Hubson has cheap plastic and it still works fine but this thing having that little tiny antenna in it you know you're not going to be able to go too far okay as far as the drone it is plastic it is the but it's not a bad design it's not it doesn't feel too cheap uh you can obviously tell by the camera in the front uh the the positioning camera that is cheap you can tell by the antennas here that there are cheap um components inside of here but you would think that if you took the time to make a pair of Nafi with a two-axis gimbal clone and you have brushless motors that some of the features would be a lot better than your toy grade quads and it just does not look like they are at all. Uh, I'll do some more testing on this but for now I would say at 150 bucks um, it's right in the price range of the of the bugs and, and those that don't have a gimbal and just because this has a gimbal it is not very stable so i would put that in the same category as those it's not up there with the xenos or femis it's a little over a tello and i'd say 100 100 dollars to 150 dollar mark uh this drone is this drone might be worth the price it is a very good flyer it does it is very stable even though it was windy but just as we saw with the Mavic Mini, this one's only this one's under 400 grams. So when it's windy out, you're going to have a hard time getting it back if you go against the wind. All right, so I'll do more tests on this and let you know what I think of this thing later on. All right, if you like my video, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.